coming up on today's show. Tesla opens Giga Berlin at last with an exclusive party, County Fair and Cybertruck Beer. Solid Power secures extra funding and shows some promising data from its latest round of testing. And Tesla causes quite a stir by removing specs and pricing for the Cybertruck from its website. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to EVs in New Zealand. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup in the world of clean cars and green energy. Today is episode 200 which means that we've been doing this for just about four years now. Thank you for being here, and thanks as always for joining me. Last weekend, Tesla officially opened Giga Berlin. To mark the occasion, it held a special 9,000 people rave cave event, opened up the factory to tours, and had an outside county fair for good measure. Thanks to the event, we learned Tesla's plans on making one car body every 45 seconds on its brand new Model Y production line. We learned via Elon Musk that the Model Y seats on the Giga Berlin made cars will be mounted directly to Tesla's brand new 4680 structural battery pack, with the body then lowered around the battery pack and seat assembly. In addition, Musk announced the start of Cyberbeer, a brand new brew that Tesla will sell in honor of Giga Berlin. It will come in a Cybertruck shaped bottle. With production due to start on Model Y in November and deliveries due to start in December, Tesla also opened the order books for right hand drive Model Y in the UK for delivery starting next year. Expect other right hand drive markets to follow. The iconic 911 sports car is the vehicle that most people think of when asked to name a Porsche model, and for years it's been the brand's flagship. But this week we learned that for this year, the all-electric Taycan four-door sedan has outsold the 911 for the first time in its history. Year-to-date sales for the Taycan are almost three times what they were in the same period last year, while 911 sales only grew 10%. 28,640 Taycans were sold between January and September, out of a total of 217,198 cars sold this year. The increase in sales of the Taycan means that it's now the fourth most popular Volkswagen Group EV globally, chasing behind the Volkswagen ID3 and ID4, as well as the Audi e-tron. Canadian EV startup Electromechanica has officially begun sales of its first vehicle, the single-seat solo EV. And no, you're not losing your mind. Back in 2018, it began deliveries of limited production prototypes to select customers. But this time, we're talking series-made vehicles produced in China, and eventually the US, when the US production facility goes online. While it's being marketed as an alternative to a full-size car, just like the Akimoto FUV, its price, touching 20,000 US dollars, is putting some buyers off. But with a unique appearance that's reminiscent of the more powerful Sparrow EV of 20 years ago, expect plenty to be purchased by businesses wanting a unique marketing vehicle. To tie in with the launch, the company has announced a service agreement with Bosch to help keep customers' cars on the road. Solid-state battery packs have long been the holy grail of the EV battery world, and this week Solid Power, which has BMW and Volkswagen among its investors, announced some promising data from its high-content silicon cells. While Solid Power says its testing is still some way from completion, an outside non-profit research organization subjected its high-content silicon cells to a series of extreme tests. It noted that they only demonstrated, quote, benign failures rather than complete failure. Nail penetration tests showed no loss of internal material, venting or flames, with cell temperatures only elevating slightly. The cells were overcharged to 200% with no fire venting or breakdown, and they survived external short circuits. It also released performance data on its high silicon EV traction batteries, showcasing over 1,000 charge-discharge cycles with minimal battery capacity loss, high energy density, and rapid charging. As it moves to its next phase, it's also received new funding to help it refine iron sulfide cathodes. Watch this space. 
13 years ago, well-known entertainer and car guy Jay Leno took the original Aptera out for a spin on his TV show Jay Leno's Garage. And this week, he became the first non-Aptera employee to drive the new Aptera EV on the road. Accompanied by Aptera co-founder Chris Anthony, Leno took Sol, the second of three Aptera Alpha prototypes, out on the road, and we got to learn a lot of new stuff about the planned all-electric three-wheeler. In addition to the front trunk, which she didn't know anything about, we learned the car's planned top speed, 110 miles per hour or 177 kilometers per hour, the car's planned weight distribution, 65-35, and the power of each motor, 50 kilowatts. A personal disclaimer, I am a reservation holder, and although I did get to ride in Noir earlier this year, ride, not drive, I cannot wait to get behind the wheel. How about it, guys? It's well known that Tesla and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration are not really on speaking terms, what with NHTSA investigating crashes involving Tesla vehicles on autopilot and emergency vehicles. But this week, the intensity upped a notch when NHTSA wrote to Tesla twice, once to complain about Tesla's original NDA program for participants in its full self-driving early access beta release, and once to complain about the way that Tesla pushed a software update to improve autopilot's detection of emergency vehicles at night. NHTSA essentially said Tesla's update was, quote, a stealth recall and complain that Tesla did not properly notify it. While I know many people will disagree, and I don't think NHTSA is always right, it is kind of important that when there's an official procedure like the one NHTSA is complaining about, that automakers follow official rules, even if it can fix things via an OTA update. Chinese firm Contemporary Amperex Technology Co. Limited, known in the West as Cattle, has announced a massive $5 billion battery recycling facility. Cattle, which currently supplies EV battery cells to a number of automakers, including Tesla, is currently the world's largest EV battery manufacturer, and the move to enter into the recycling industry will dramatically reduce the amount of raw materials it needs to mine for future battery cells. The new plant, located in the Hubei province, will not only break down battery cells for recycling, but will also refine and rejuvenate materials on site, ready for use in new battery packs. The announcement comes just a month after Cattle acquired Canada's Millennial Lithium Corporation for $300 million. Following on from announcements made earlier this year that suggest the brand is pivoting away from internal combustion engines at last, Honda has pledged to go electrified only from 2030 at a special online reveal event featuring five new electric models. But before you get excited, all of the vehicles showcased, including two models based on the HRV with more than 300 miles, 482 kilometers of promised range per charge, are destined for the Chinese market only. In fact, with only some of Honda's 10 new electric models promised to launch in the next five years getting a chance to go global, we're feeling extremely let down. Sure, there is the Honda E in Europe and the GM-built Honda Prologue on the way for America, but come on, guys. With Rivian's first electric trucks, the R1T and R1S, now rolling off the production line, check out our first drive in the show notes below if you haven't seen it yet, the company has turned its attention to its future. And in a filing made on Friday to the SEC ahead of Rivian's IPO later this year, we learned that while Samsung SDI currently provides Rivian with 2170 form factor cells, its a long-term goal is to do what Tesla did and bring cell production in-house. In its official IPO filings, the company disclosed nearly $1 billion losses in the first half of the year, with planned capital expenditures of $8 billion through to the end of 2023, much of it focused on battery cell development and manufacturing, as well as expansion of its own Rivian charging network. With Samsung SDI rumored to be planning a battery facility in Normal, Illinois, right next to Rivian's factory, in fact, I'd guess a similar arrangement is on the table to the one that Tesla struck with Panasonic. We have long been fans of vehicle-to-grid technology at this channel, and I've got a vehicle-to-home capable truck on order, just so that I can keep things running if and when the power goes out. But one thing we've not covered all that much here is the actual real-world benefits of vehicle-to-grid. Now though, we've got a great example. After Beverly, Massachusetts detailed the benefits, its first all-electric school bus has offered the local grid during the summer vacation earlier this year. During the summer months, the Thomas-built SAF T Liner C2 Julie fed nearly three megawatt hours of power back to the local power grid, 
through 30 power events lasting 50 hours, helping dramatically lower grid demand and reduce the need for peaker plants. Since school buses spend much of their time parked up, a VTG really is the ideal way to ensure electric buses are a good investment. And finally, the fans of Tesla's long-awaited Cybertruck have been keeping an eagle eye on Tesla's website for changes to specifications and pricing as Tesla's Giga Austin, where the truck will be made, gets closer to completion. But this week, Tesla removed all specs and pricing from its various Cybertruck configurations, causing quite a lot of the chatter online causing quite a lot of chatter online. Tesla will still take your deposit, but all model specific specifications and the ability to lock in the full self-driving package for $10,000 are missing. But before you get super stressed, remember that it's fairly common for Tesla to remove something from its website shortly before making a new announcement or changing specs and pricing. It's also possible, but by the time this show airs, the story will have changed. So please don't get angry with me in the comments. It's the middle of the day on Saturday New Zealand time when we film this, so things are probably different by now. Sorry. And on that note, we are done for the day. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next episode. And if you haven't already switched yet, why not switch to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero Certified Renewable Electricity Company? It is super easy to make the switch, and when you do, you'll be helping New Zealand wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back soon with more great videos for you all to enjoy, but until then, I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite! See you next time!